Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and today I'm going to get into a video on how to connect into your internal network from anywhere in the world. Now this will be using a dynamic DNS and where, where did this come from to start with? Well basically someone was having problems with iSpy and I still use iSpy by the way but they were using some type of free version of iSpy and whatever. And they were having problems with it uh, because they didn't want to pay for iSpy, which, you know, it's fine it's on their head. But the thing is, is they wanted to be able to stream their cameras or see their cameras. So the problem is, is the, um, is, is with that, if they uh, want to see the cameras live, but without paying for iSpy and, and jump through all these hoops, they might as well just use a dynamic DNS, a DDNS. So with that one in mind, I'll leave a link down below to the video that that person commented on so you can check that out. But basically what this will do is this will allow you to have remote access into your your home's system. Now keep in mind that you're going to have to have a little bit of a technical know-how in order to do this. And one big thing I want to recommend is make sure that your system is secure. So one thing I do personally is after this video, the, the DDNS that I'm going to be using, I'm going to delete it. So you know, it's whatever the link is going to be, whatever. But as far as my security cameras, my my IoT devices and stuff like that they can never, ever, ever, ever see outside of this house unless if I give it very specific access. So this is a very, very important thing because one of the biggest things that a lot of people don't know is a lot of IoT devices and security cameras, especially the cheaper ones, they are very vulnerable to flaws. If you infect one, the infection can actually spread to other devices on the same network so it's best to just block it off altogether. it's not like the things are it's, if, if it's like something like nest or the ring doorbell or something like that fine that's one thing because and and, and that's going to be updated constantly give, hopefully but normal security cameras normal iot devices they aren't so you might as well just block them in that way no one from the outside of the network can actually gain access to them so with that one in mind, that, that's something I kind of recommend to do first off. But given that you did that and given that you are okay with doing a little bit of technical know-how, what I'm going to be using is no, v, no IP. So what no IP is, is a dynamic DNS service or DDNS service. So what a DDNS service does is it gives you a website that you can go to and that will connect to your home IP address. See, the thing is, is your home IP address, your external IP address to your house, well, that changes every so often unless you pay for a static IP address, which no one does, so, you know, whatever. So what this does is this allows you to not have to worry about, you know, whatever your IP address is, which is difficult into itself, but you just need to remember a simple little website and that will gain you access into your internal systems. Now, with that one in mind, I, I would recommend that you just take a look around at other DDNSs that, and, and basically um, you're going to find that they're, they're pretty much most the same. But there's uh, free ones, there's paid ones, and there's ones that offer different type of services and all the other stuff. Um, I, I prefer no IP because I've, I've used them for a while. They're very reputable and they're, you know, they're worthwhile to note. So with that one in mind, and, and the free version, by the way, for no IP, you have to okay it every 30 days. So keep that one in mind. Now, with that one in mind, you're going to need to actually download a client-based software. To set up your stuff, you don't really need to do that but to make sure that it lasts for a long time. Because again, your IP address will change every so often. It can be every day, it can be every week or something like that, but still it will change every so often. So to make sure that you have the proper, um, where the website has a proper link to the proper IP address, download the client side 
service. And what the client side service does is it looks at your external IP address for your house and says, this is the IP address and it syncs it up to the server and syncs it up to the given website that you made. So this is something that's important to note. If you're using a VPN on that computer, this is going to cause problems. So, but if you're using a VPN on the actual um, uh, Wi-Fi router or something like that, then you might be able to get around it. But 99% of people ain't going to be doing that. So make sure that if you have this on onto some computer and you want to use it, make sure that it doesn't have a VPN active on the computer itself. Now, what I would recommend if you're like our viewer that has the um, iSpy stuff, then what you need to do is just wherever you have the iSpy on, since it needs to be on always anyways, you know, security camera server. And by the way, I do have videos on how to make a old Windows computer into a server like FTP server or a into a security camera server and how to set up iSpy and all that stuff. I'll leave links down below all that down there, but I'll recommend just leaving the client side software on that. And that way you, um, you know, since it has to be on all the ways, you don't have to worry about any VPNs and any of that stuff. So with that one in mind, that's something to note into itself. Now, as far as this goes, you're going to need to know something else. And this is port forwarding. So real quick, uh, the website I have, so let's go to here. The website I have is the following. So what I have set up in my internal network, this is my internal network, the one I two once it said 86, blah, blah, blah. Well, the thing is my internal network, this is what I'm seeing for those two. So for the one I two once it said 86, 20 with a port 81, I get the weather camera, an IP camera. And for the um, 81A5, I get my printer. Well, the thing is, is if I go to here and I try to put in the um, 81, so again, same, just trying to push it over, and you can see that it connects to the camera. It connects to the camera through the DDNS. And if I go to, if I try to say, let's just change this to something I know I don't have a opening to, say 200, and it will kick back, hey, there, there's nothing for it connect to. And if I try to do something like, uh, I think it was 1212, and it connects me to my printer as you know, we got here and we have here. Now you might be wondering why would you even want to go to this level? One of the interesting things is, is if you can find a DDNS where you don't have to renew it every 30 days, or if you go around say your grandparents' house every 30 days or something like that, and they have problems constantly with their printer or whatever it may be, then it might be a church, it might be uh, uh, your grandparents, it might be an office or whatever it may be, because you know how things are. You can most of the printers you can remotely see is there an update for the thing, or you can go to status and say, oh, the problem is you don't have any black ink or whatever it may be, so you can tell them what exact ink it needs to be changed or whatever it may be. So this is a major thing to note is. Um, it allows you remote access even into that level, but you, you got to make sure of security. So how, how does this work? Whereas this is a port uh, 1212, and this doesn't even have a port on it. Well, the big thing is, is whenever you have a internal or even external service, whenever you go to a uh, web browser, um, server, so for example, Facebook or Google, Yahoo, or whatever it may be. What well, the th fact is, is those are all port 80, normally port 80. So the big thing to note is um, if, if you don't, if in the internal network, you're, you're able to do something like this where you don't have to put in a port number and it kicks you off to the proper area, then note that you're dealing with port 80. 
Um, now, if you don't know what ports are open and what it might be, so you know what the IP address is. To say, for example, I knew the IP address for the printer is this, but I didn't know what port is open and port 80 isn't working. Do a port scan. Because just because, like say for example right here, this should be port 80, but obfuscation, what it may be, you know, you, you can move that around and what it may be by yourself. So if you're not really sure, you can do a port scan and what a port scan does, it sees for all the open ports and you can just test it one by one. Normally you don't have too many open ports for a given IP address. If you see a whole bunch of ports open, by the way, for a given IP address, you might want to see why and lock that crap down because that's a security flaw. So you should only have ports that are open that are being used. This is a very, very important thing. And that's one of the biggest problems I found with a lot of IP cameras is if you actually take a look at, um, they'll, they'll tend to have four or even five ports open when they only need to have one open and, and that causes problems into itself. So this is something to note. Now, as far as that goes, what, why is this relevant? Well, taking a look at, I, I took a screenshot of what I got on my end, um, setting up my router through my phone. And keep in mind that the area that you can set port forwarding is different. It's, it's probably going to be different from what I got. It's probably going to look different on my, all, all that might be. And what your best bet is, is to go to wherever on your router it shows all your devices. And if you can a click on the device, and if it says port forwarding or something like that, then you might be able to do it there. Otherwise, you got to hunt around for a port forwarding area. So with that, um, what does all of this mean? And you're going to see something very similar to this, maybe not exact, but something very similar. So what does all this mean? Well, the internal port, port is basically what does the internal interface use? So in this case, if we're taking a look at my printer, it'll be port 80, whereas my camera, the weather camera, is using port 81, right? So with that, this is what I, I would put. If, if it's using port 80, then put for the internal port 80. If it's using port 200, then uh, for the internal, then use port 200 there that's the interface that that, that that needs to go to so again like if you're doing like an ftp server or something like that you might hear oh port 21 but you might be obfuscating the stuff and put it at port whatever and just make sure that you got the right port there so the external this is something that you got to keep in mind and that's something that you might want to write notes down on so the external port is what you'll be connecting to. So for example, with this is if we take again, a look at this, this is port 80, right? And um, an in internal external, this is gonna be port 81. I, you know, I, I showed it earlier, but as far as this going into the printer with using the DDNS, we got port one, two, one, two. So port 1212 is obviously not port 80. Um, and ba basically what it is for the external, this, when I say go to port 1212, it knows to route all the traffic to this given IP address under port 80. Simple as that. So it, it tells it where you want the traffic to go to. So if I put port 81, so I delete all this other crap and it will know to route the traffic go to this address under port 81 um, and, and, and if I wanted to I can move this port around to like 900 or whatever it may be but basically it, it will just know to route the traffic to this and, and specifically that port and, and it's also important to note that um, this, it doesn't show you what the internal ports are. It doesn't show you any of that. It just shows you your dynamic DNS and what port you're using to connect from the external. 
to the internal. And and how does this relate? How does this relate in uh, in the real world without dynamic DNS? Well, the thing is, is if you took your if if you set up your stuff right, and if I took my external IP address and just plop it right there, it would take me to the exact same location. That's all the dynamic DNS does is it routes you to your external IP address and then you say what port you want to go to or whatever it might be. So this is something that's important to note. Now, as far as the bottom part on this, you're, you're probably going to see this as TCP or UDP. Most of them are going to say either or, or both. And uh, I'll, I'll say both because the fact of the matter is, is you, you can play around with it, see what works and whatever. But the fact of the matter is, is it's either or and it doesn't really matter. So with that, um, you know, set up port 40 and whatever it may be. Now, with that one in mind, one big thing I want to note is you also need to keep in mind things like this. All right, so we set up the port 40 and I'm able to get into my printer. Great. But I didn't have to put the password in to get into this. So if I knew some security flaw, it's like, oh, I know this version of the printer, brother, blah, 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 blah. And um, there's some type of security flaw with it. Surprise, surprise, I can actually screw over the person. So with that one in mind, that is something that's very, very important to note. Is if it's something like this, I I, I kind of wouldn't have it connecting to a... Um, Yes, whatever in, internal system that doesn't have a password. Make sure it's password protected. Make sure that it is basically only traffic that you that's authorized is able to get through and all the other stuff. So this is a big thing to note into itself. But with that one in mind, that that should help you out by quite a bit. And it's actually quite interesting because let's say for example, if and, and this is how they did it in the old days, is. Um, Let's say, for example, that I wanted to print something from this. If I can set up the settings right, then what, what can happen is if I can set it where it it takes in information from port whatever, then what I can do is I can set my print uh, from wherever in the world to send to whatever a DDNS is and then the proper port and it will send to the printer and it will print off from there. Obviously the printer I have to set up right to do that. And nowadays you use something like Google Cloud or something like that. But still in some cases that still is possible, but you know who who would want to do that nowadays. But anyways as far as that goes, hopefully this has helped you out and to get an access into your internal systems. Um, Hopefully it wasn't too far above anyone's head. If you did have a little bit of a problem keeping up with this, then feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll try to help you out as best I can. But leave a like, subscribe, share, and, and I'll see you next video. Hope you have a great day. And by the way, I'll leave links to all this stuff down below.